In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. So we live in a time where skepticism runs high in our culture, in our veins, in our mindset. It seems like almost everything that we look at, any challenges that we look at, is met with a degree of skepticism. Right? Because every challenge, innate to every challenge, is like is this realization that there's a lack of resources, that there's a lack of an ability. Right? And skepticism really comes in when we, when we see that lack or that deficiency and we wonder and we postulate, well, how, is, how are we going to overcome that? How are we going to fulfill that deficiency? And we tend to meet it with a degree of skepticism, which is fed in to by our reason-driven minds, right? And skepticism is something that has always been part of human nature, right? But it's heightened these days, right? It is heightened these days. And we see skepticism coming in when we look at a whole variety of uh, all the different areas of our life. We see skepticism always looking at like, well, are my finances enough? We see skepticism coming in and saying like, well, you know, what are the resources that I have? Or, or what are the hands that I have to get the, the current job done? So we see skepticism looking at all these different things and, and sometimes skepticism prevails in the situation, right? Skepticism can prevail in the situation. And it's no surprise that especially here in the West, more so than the East, that we see skepticism really coming in. And that really has its roots back to the time of the Renaissance, 16 to 1800, where reason started to come into the picture more. And in order to exercise our ability to reason or our acknowledgement of our intellectual ability to reason, we've looked at so many things of the past was a great deal of skepticism. And one of the things that has been looked at with a great deal of skepticism is religion and faith, right? And coming from the 16 to 1800s and, and, and really making its way west, we look at everything with a degree of skepticism, right? We look at the scriptures and we're wondering like, okay, did this person really write this, right? We look at miracles of today and we start to wonder like, okay, did that really happen? Is there a scientific evidence for it? Can we prove it? Can we disprove it? Like we meet everything with a degree of skepticism and we can even look at it inside the church here. You know, growing up here in the West, sometimes you hear stories from the East and you wonder like, is that really true? Did that saint really appear? Did this miracle really happen? Like we meet it with a degree of skepticism more so here in the West than in the East, right? But it's ingrained in us. And when we look at today's story, we see that it was also in the disciples, right? It was also in the disciples because they knew nothing else, like times were hard. And so when you put them in a situation where times are hard and the Roman Empire is very oppressive and resources are very thin, and they're just getting to know who Jesus Christ is and his ability. When they're put in the situation of having, you know, more than just 5,000, you know, people, that they had 5,000 men, but means they had many more. So for them to be in a situation where Jesus is saying, give them something to eat, we see skepticism coming into the picture, even in the disciples. We see them looking at like the five loaves and the two fish and, and understandably so saying like, we only got five loaves and two fish. But within their tone and within the scripture, we can get, you know, ascertain like they're a bit skeptical about what's going to happen in the situation, right? So they're skeptical about their resources. They're even skeptical about the amount of money that it would take. 200 denarii wouldn't be enough for everybody to get just a little bit, right? So we see skepticism everywhere, right? We see skepticism everywhere. But the Lord challenges them. The Lord challenges them just like he challenges us and we need to be consistently challenged in the degree of skepticism in which we view our current situations. We need to be challenged to see the potential beyond, 
All right? We need to be challenged to see the potential beyond what our eyes and minds can see and reason through. And that's what our Lord did with the disciples. And we know how the story goes, that they took the five loaves and the two fish, they blessed, they broke, and not only did they eat, but they had in excess. And this story really sent a huge reverberation throughout the land because many would seek after Jesus because he, would, he was able to give and provide food in a time where it was scarce, in a time where it was difficult, in a time where everybody was looking at the tangible things that they had and said, it is just not enough. And so people sought after him just because they wanted more food. But when we take this idea of skepticism and how we see the things of our lives, and we challenge ourselves to really look at how we carry day to day, and the different ways that we look and, and, and we see things with such a negative lens, even with respect to our finances, our um, you know, positions at work, the resources, our possessions, and we, there's always this sense like it's not enough. All right? And it's not enough because we're always looking for something a little bit more. And we need to challenge ourselves to instead of seeing like it's not enough, all right, and, and instead of looking at things with such a negative lens, to challenge ourselves to say, okay, but what I have in the hands of the Lord has so much more potential. All right, has so much more potential. And actually, it's such a reasonable thought process. It's not imaginary. It's not fictitious. It's not a fairy tale. It's actually very reasonable to say, well, if I take the things that I have, and I'm thankful for them, but then I put them in the hands of the Lord, the potential is so much greater because He knows how to orchestrate things in a way that none of us could ever do it. Right? He knows how to take little and make it much. And we need to do this especially, and I would say like, with respect to our relationships. You know, and, and, and one, one area that has been heavy on my heart is that like, when people are facing relation, problems in their relationships, in their marriage, and you know, parent to child, child to parent, and even with close friends. Sometimes we look at the situations around us and we say like, there is no way that this can work. There's no way that this relationship will work out. What are we looking at? We're looking at like, well, what's my temperament? What's their temperament? What am I willing to concede? What are they willing to concede? Like we ration through it. But if we challenge ourselves to say, okay, well, this is what I have, but this is what the Lord can bring into the situation. He can bring into the situation a heart of repentance. He can bring into the situation a desire for mercy and compassion. He can bring into the relationship a spirit of forgiveness. And when we bring those into like a relationship that is troubled, there's far greater potential than what we initially thought was possible. And while relationships is just one example, we can look at the many examples in our lives and challenge ourselves to say like, okay, I may not see all the potential there, but I know with what I have in the hands of the Lord, far greater things can be reached. An output that I couldn't have produced by myself or come to by myself can be reached. And we need to also look at it in terms as a church community. Because here, like, as like we're struggling to just kind of get back to church, like we have a storm two weeks in a row, and it, like these are all challenges. Sometimes we look around and we say like, we're tiny, we're small, we don't have much. But in the hands of the Lord, it's so much. But how do we see it? Do we meet the situations in life with a lens of skepticism? Or do we see it as this is what we have, but the potential is so much greater than what my eyes and my mind can imagine or reason through. 
It's a big challenge in how we see the world. But it's one that we need a story such as the feeding of the five loaves and the, the feeding of the five thousand with the five loaves and the two fish. We need this story to continually remind us to not be so skeptical, to not be so reason driven, to not be so knowledge based, not to say that our faith excludes that. Okay? Our faith doesn't put those to the side, but our faith can take them, use them in the right way in order to reach something that is so much greater. The Lord asks us to use our minds. He challenged the disciples. He said, give them something to eat. It was an exercise in reason. It was an exercise in knowledge. But he wanted to take it and bring it to a greater place. All right? So he will use our reason. He will use our knowledge. He will challenge us. But he also challenges us not to stop at just what we see and what we know, but to go beyond. So we'll just take a minute and as we you know, meditate on all the different challenges that we face these days, to not see it with eyes of skepticism, but to see it with eyes of hope. To see it like put in the hands of God and let Him do what He is so good at doing. Let Him do the things that only He can do. But it requires us to make that transition. To not just see it and be skeptical, but to see it and see potential in the hands of God. And glory be to God forever. Amen.